Hi there guys, today we're going to be uh, looking at LAB, the LAB color space, and we want to do kind of a technical look at it by analyzing the numbers. So the first thing we want to take a look at is what is meant by a color space and what is meant by a gamut. So with that, let's go ahead and just do it. Imagine that you are the first person on planet Earth who's ever going to take a systematic look at light. Beyond what Sir Isaac Newton did anyway, he did a lot of amazing stuff, but he never did anything with color spaces or gamuts. Now maybe the first thing you're going to do is write down in a book all the names of colors that you can see in a rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Well, that is your color space. Now, you want to be more specific with that because what you find is if you ask uh, some of the other some of the other barbarians around in the cave, Trog, what do you mean by red? And you find that he comes up with an answer that's not quite exactly what yours is. And it turns out that everybody you talk to has a different vision of what red means or what blue means or what yellow means. So what you need to do now is go back and you have developed mathematics at this point because you're a genius. Now you're going to go back and mathematically describe every color of light that you are talking about in any mathematical way that you could figure out how to do it. So now when you go back and pin your color space, the names of your colors, to a mathematical definition, you now have a gamut. Now what we are looking at here in this image is several different gamuts of color. Starting from the top is the LAB uh, gamut of color, and you can see how big it is. Under that is kind of a triangle shape uh, called Adobe RGB. Uh, smaller than that is sRGB, and then the red line down sort of in the middle is CMYK for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. All these different gamuts of color and their uh, attendant color spaces have different uses. CMYK is used specifically for the publishing industry, for new, anything from newspapers to magazines, any kind of print material. Most of the images you probably have ever worked with are in RGB. Um, it might be Adobe RGB, it might be sRGB, it might be wide gamut RGB, but it probably is in RGB, is the one that you are most familiar with. Uh, today, what we're doing is moving out of that into the LAB color space. Uh, as you can see, it's much larger than the others. It encompasses many more uh, colors and many more intensities or brightnesses of color. Now, we won't be worried so much about the brightnesses of colors or the fact that the LAB gamut is wider than the others today. We want to look mostly just at the numbers. So, let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we're going to do is take a look at the three LAB channels. The first channel we're going to look at is the lightness channel, and next to that will be channel A, and the next to that will be channel B. The lightness channel contains pretty intuitively only tonality of pixels, in other words how bright they are or how dark they are. With that center square in the line on the lightness channel, what you could do is click and drag that up to make all your pixels darker or down to make all your pixels brighter. The channel A, the one in the middle, has two primary colors, green and magenta. If you were to take that line and pull it up, you're going to make your entire image more green or down more magenta. Likewise, in the channel B on the far right, if you pull it up, you pull it towards the third primary color of LAB, blue, or pull it down to the fourth primary color of LAB, yellow. That's right, LAB has four primary colors, green and magenta in the first pair, and blue and yellow in the second pair. This is totally different from what you would see in RGB that has three primary colors, red, green, and blue, or CMYK, cyan, magenta, and yellow, which also have three primary colors, and throw black in as well. 
So let's start taking a systematic look by the numbers at the lightness channel, channel A, and channel B. In Photoshop, I uh, opened up a curves dialog box and set the channel to the lightness channel, as you can see in the red uh, rectangle on the right. Then what I did was I took my cursor and I hovered it on the right-hand side of this gradient image that I created from black, black, all the way up to white, white, uh, as circled in red. Now take a look on the left-hand side in the info panel. What you will see is the L for lightness. Never mind the fact that there are two numbers, um, but it is 99. Now if I were to move a little bit farther to the right in this image, I would hit 100. So this is one of the first things to know about the LAB uh, color space in the lightness channel, that the brightest whites are 100. Now, if we were to come on down to uh, the darkest darks, as we did right there, take a look at the L value now in the info panel, and you will see 7. And we'll bring that down a little bit for, uh, further, and I'll go ahead and hit 0. So this is uh, kind of a very different from the way they do brightness uh, in the RGB color space. This goes from 100 at white to 0 for black. All right, pretty cool. Now the next thing we want to do is move right on into channel A and take a look uh, by the numbers for the two primary colors there, green and magenta. Now in the Curves dialog box, I switched from the Lightness channel to channel A, and as you can see, there's a 45-degree diagonal line on the gradient, the black-to-white gradient. Now there is no color in here. Channel A handles color, and there's no color, so it's just middle gray. Now I've pulled that line up to the left towards one of the primary colors, green, and the entire image has gone green. Now, as you can see on the left, green is in the A channel. Here's where we get dive real into the numbers. And what you will see is that in the A, I'm getting a reading of minus 51. Now, take a look on the right-hand side of what you're looking at there. It says minus 128. When I drag up into the green, I can ramp all the way up to a green intensity of minus 128. Green is a cold color, and all the greens have negative values in LAB. And now we're going to pull that line down in the Curves dialog box and make the entire image turn magenta. And when we hit into magenta, what you are going to see, check out on the left-hand side, we see 44 in the A channel. That's a plus 44. So this is one of the things to remember about LAB by the numbers, is that when you pull into the cold colors, like green, for example, they are minus. When you pull into the warm colors, like magenta, they're plus. The maximum intensity value you could have for magenta is plus 127, and what we just saw before is that the maximum intensity of green, the cold color, is minus 128. Okay, and now we move on to the next channel, which will be channel B handling blue and yellow. Here's just the channel B with the grayscale image from black to white, and again, as you see, there is no value in the B channel, and there will be no value in the A channel. There are no numbers for this because there are no colors. I could vary the brightness from 100 to 0, as we did in the beginning, but there are no colors in this. So the only way to start seeing the numbers is to drag that line around. And the first thing I'll do is drag it up into the blue, and again, the maximum intensity for blue I could get is minus 128. The value I'm seeing where my cursor is is minus 54. It's a cold color. It's a minus. Now let's drag it down into the yellow, and we are getting into the plus values because yellow is a warm color, and in LAB, warm colors have positive values. The value I'm hitting right now is 53. 
I'm not even really that close. I'm not even halfway to as intense as I could get with yellow. And here's kind of a graphic representation of what we've just gone over. If you look at the diagonal that points left, that's the A channel, and you see red on the bottom right, maximum 127 plus, and you see green, maximum one, minus 128 uh, on the top left. Likewise, you see the B channel running diagonally, uh, bottom left to top right, and you see your lightness at the top of 100 uh, going down all the way to zero uh, as black. Uh, I've got this, I find this very handy. In fact, I have printed this out um, and taped it to the wall, and I look at it on a regular basis until I pretty much have memorized everything. Okay, well at this point, uh, let's take a look at uh, some numbers changing in real time and look at a spectrum of colors and sweep our cursor around and see exactly what's happening as they change real time. After having reviewed LAB by the numbers and looking at our different channels, the A and B channel, and seeing that the A channel contains green and magenta, green pulling towards the negative, magenta pulling towards the positive, and the B channel the two primary colors being blue and yellow, blue pulling towards negative and yellow pulling towards positive. I uh, wanted to take a look at this for real. Finally, let's go ahead and do this and see what our numbers actually look at. Now, as I pull my cursor left to right across the spectrum here, let's keep our eyes right here, right on the LAB numbers. And not even so much the lightness, I'm not concerned so much about them. Again, they will range from close to 100 for the brightest whites down to close to zero for the blackest blacks, maybe even hit zero. Let's give it a try. Let's hit this kind of magenta right in here and check the numbers that we have. Now, magenta is in the A channel. Magenta, it is a warm color, so it should pull towards positive, and it is. We're getting positive 91 in the A channel. For magenta. Now yes, we are getting minus 50 in the B. Now in the B, minus is blue. So there's a bit of blue thrown into this uh, magenta also just to mix and make the color that we're pointing at right now. Let's move over to red. Red is looking like A81. Now if A is 81, that's a positive in the A, that means we're pulling towards magenta. We're still pulling towards magenta. And the B is now positive, which means we are pulling towards the positive warm color in the B channel, and that's yellow. So we're starting to throw in a little yellow here. Around here must be some kind of orange or something. And what is happening is that A is 50, positive, magenta, warm color. B is positive, yellow, warm color, and we're pulling in more and more yellow. And here we are right in the middle of the yellow, but the, isn't that interesting is that the yellow, so now we're in the B channel and it should pull positive, which it does up to 92, but we're also getting a minus 13 in the A, which means cold color in the A, the cold color in the A is green. So we're pulling in just a little bit of green there, tiny amount of green. We should go more negative in the green as we slide over to the right because we're getting into green, and we do. We've got minus 79 now in the A channel, minus cold color, A channel green. But we're pulling in 81 uh, positive on the B, and the positive is the warm color. That's yellow in the B channel. So we're getting kind of a yellowish green. Come over here into this cyan, which is a lot blue, isn't it? Look at that. We're getting A minus 50, so we're going minus in the A channel, cold color in the A channel, that's green, and we're throwing in a little bit of the minus in the B. Minus in the B is the cold, that's the blue. So a little bit of blue, and we're mixing in a whole bunch of green, kind of greenish mostly, and a little bit of blue. Now that uh, B channel should go stronger and stronger into the negative, which is blue, as we slide over, and it is. It goes all the way. I've got it up to 112 right there. 
and then back to this kind of magenta pinkish sort of color over here. And what have we got here? We've got 93 in the A. That's pretty strongly positive, which is magenta. And the B is also pretty strong in the minus, the blue in the B. Uh, so we're getting a bunch of B in there, a bunch of blue, and uh, being swamped a little bit by the magenta in the A. So there it is, LAB by the numbers. So now when we start looking at real images that we have, real landscapes or portraits or what are, seascapes, whatever it is, as we scroll around the image, we should be able to get absolutely a fixed idea of exactly what the color is by the numbers in LAB. Thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.